My name is Ian and I am a senior research scientist at the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. The IIHS is a, an independent nonprofit organization. We're dedicated to reducing highway crash deaths, injuries, and property damage losses. So, you know, it's really difficult to talk about what I do on a daily basis um, because it it varies so much day to day. Uh, probably say about 75% of what I do is managing the several research projects that that I'm involved with. And the, the, each project, you know, each research project starts out with um, you have a basic research question, you develop that question into a more concrete plan, you'll propose it to management, and management will, will give you approval, or they won't. If you get approval, then you just simply go out, conduct your research, analyze the data, and disseminate the findings. So part of the project management is the technical scientific work. You know, are we asking the right research questions? Is the data quality good? Where are we going to present our findings? Part of the management is financial. Are we staying uh, within budget? And then there's also uh, the, the time schedule. Are we meeting deadlines? So when I'm not involved with the project management stuff, uh, there are a number of other things that I do. Uh, one of the coolest things is the opportunity to um, go to various symposiums and conferences. We have uh, the opportunity to do some international travel, which is uh, fairly uncommon. A lot of organizations don't have, have uh, that opportunity. Um, in addition to uh, professional meetings like these conferences, uh, I'll have impromptu brainstorming sessions with the researchers that I work with. Um, and I'm always staying on top of the, the latest traffic safety research, uh, through reading academic journals. Uh, and I'd say probably the, the coolest thing that I, I get to be involved with is test driving some of the sweetest cars out there. You know, we're always researching uh, new technologies that are being put into the vehicles by the manufacturers. And those, are, those technologies typically only come out to the high-end luxury vehicles first. And the result of that is I, you know, I get to drive some pretty sweet rides. Okay, so a typical work week for me is, uh, it's really a straight nine to five job. I work 9.30 to 5.30 actually uh, when we get a one hour lunch break. So technically it is a 35 hour work week. And I'd say overall that my stress level on a scale of one to 10, it varies uh, with, with the job um, what I, from week to week. Um, I'd say the range is probably uh, range from four to seven. Uh, the main thing being that you know I'm involved with some fairly complex projects that I manage, and you know there are deadlines associated with the projects. And when I'm working up against a deadline, it, it can get pretty stressful. So I have my PhD in human factor psychology, and you know I wasn't really I hadn't heard of, about human factor psychology when I was an undergraduate, and I think that's fairly typical. But human factors is a field that kind of deals with the interaction uh, between humans and man-made devices. So in my case, I'm focusing on drivers and their interaction with cars and the highway system. And you know, we look at the interaction uh, between the drivers and the cars to see if we can make uh, systems more usable, safer, more efficient. And so while having a, a degree in a PhD in human factor psychology is uh, not explicitly a requirement, I will say that nine out of the 10 researchers that I work with here at the Institute do have their PhDs in some field. And we have a couple of engineers, uh, three or four other psychologists, 
as well as some uh, a couple of statisticians. So while getting a, a PhD would not necessarily be a requirement to get the job, you could probably uh, qualify for a position like this with a master's degree. A PhD would definitely give you a leg up, increase your salary in the long run. And you know, if you were to just have the master's, you, you probably would need some sort of internship. Um, so if you're interested in a PhD, it typically is going to take about five years after your undergraduate degree. Uh, this area, uh, research psychology, typically does not require a licensure. So that's, that's uh, a positive thing to think about. Uh, and you know, one thing that I, I will mention um, that I did not expect going into this line of work, uh, of hum uh, specifically the, the human factors degree, is the, how much I would be interacting with engineers. And had I realized that, I, I probably would have, um, during my graduate coursework, taken a, a class in something like engineering management that would kind of help me uh, understand the way engineers think and help me communicate with them when I'm working on the projects. The last thing I want to mention is uh, if you are going to uh, work in the, the research field is that you will have to take several statistics and, and research design courses. Okay, so some of the best things about this job, uh, I'd say right at the top is that the group of people that I work with, they're really brilliant people, very interested in doing high quality work, and that, that attitude is, is really contagious. I'd, I'd also put at the top uh, the fact that while I'm not really my own boss, I do have a lot of autonomy. Uh, the management realizes that everybody here is an educated professional and they, they really treat us that way. Uh, the Institute, they promote a really great work-life balance. A good example of that is uh, you know, twice a year they organize a, a social, a couple of social events, one uh, around the winter holidays and another in the summer. And we have two locations separated by a couple hour drive and they pick, usually pick a midpoint and uh, provide all the food and drink and it's just an opportunity for people to come together, socialize outside of uh, work hours and it really kind of just shows that they, they care about employee morale. Um, Another thing that is, is really great about this organization is that they make things happen quickly. You know, if I justify a need for one of my projects, like for example, needing to hire a graduate student to help with data collection, you justify it, you'll get approval, and as, as soon as you have that approval, you'll have what you need almost automatically. That's really awesome. Um, and the, you know, I also would have to say that the, the benefits are, are great. You know, the, the pay is, is very competitive. The retirement benefits are excellent. Uh, for an individual, the health uh, benefits are great and they're good for uh, family. And there's also a really nice vacation package. So, you know, as far as the, the worst things I can say about the job, I'd have to say the, the time pressure is probably the worst thing. You know, like I, I mentioned uh, earlier, there is an ebb and flow. I'm not always stressed out for meeting deadlines, but there are times when a, a deadline, I'm working up against a deadline and be just for, just like you uh, taking a, a class, uh, a deadline to turn a paper in. You get stressed if, you, if it's not ready to go. Um, I also say, you know, add to the worst part, but uh, the commute. I, working in the Washington, D.C. metro area, you, know, you have a lot more job opportunities than you would, uh, say, working out in um, a rural area. But the trade-off is, a lot of times, is, is a long commute. But then again, I, a lot of my coworkers live, live a lot closer to the office than I do. So it was a personal decision on my part. So my final advice, if you're interested in the research field, 
you know, other than maintaining a solid GPA, is to volunteer to help out in a research lab at your, at your school, in your psychology department. And trust me, if you go to your psychology department and say that you're willing to help out uh, for free in a professor's research lab, somebody will take you up on the offer. And you'll get this exposure to the research world right away. You'll get, get a feeling as to whether it's an environment that you want to work in. And even more important than that, you're st you will start to build your resume up. And you, you can kind of swing things from having to compete with other students to get into a, a school that you want, to actually having faculty recruit you to come there because you've done the sort of thing that they are going to have their graduate students doing for them while they're working on their, on their graduate degrees.